when we talk about characters that I am not very versed in, Artificer stands around the top. There's a playstyle I didn't really enjoy, and it was playing from way... ...too long range. I understand that enemies are stinky and all. I mean, look at that poor Lemurian. He has done nothing wrong yet, just saw an intruder on his planet and wants to kill it. Because that's exactly what the American government would do. Say hello to the biggest burster pre-DLC in Artificer. You know what I realized? I did all the female characters in a row. I swear this wasn't intentional, but that's a good little coincidence. God damn! Without this though, what is Artificer? Well, you didn't know? Artificer is actually an acronym for Airborne, Rampacious Terrorist, Iconoclast, Flattening Idealistic Civilization, Excruciatingly Rampages through world once you know how to play this character there's a very high chance you'll never need to touch the ground or when you do it's to go get items or reset feathers i'll say it now i knew very little about this character before working on this video basically i played her enough just to unlock everything on her and stop for a good year but of course i played her for this video and i cannot believe what i am about to say next artificer is fun. It's the weirdest thing, because I could have sworn that I would not have liked this character. And then I play her, and there's just something indescribable about enemies not being able to hit you, because you just kill them too quickly no matter what time of the game it is. The thing that you can say that Artificer doesn't excel at is survivability. Coming right after Loader, this is a sharp change for sure, because you come from probably the hardest or second hardest survivor to kill, I see you, don't worry, and you're now at one of those survivors that doesn't have an escape, again. Hey, you can say I chose my programming for these videos right. One with movement, one without. I know, I should say limited movement options, but where's the hyperbole in that? Unfortunately, don't expect an engineer guide quickly, because I am not one for not moving. When I play Risk of Rain 2, I do enjoy the frenetic nature of it. This game for me is all about movement, and Artificer does have a cool movement ability with her passive ENV suit, which allows her to hover in the air. The good thing is that the hover works while sprinting, so that's a massive plus. This ability eh, is pretty cool, let's be honest just hovering above the enemies on the ground because haters gonna hate. That's pretty epic. Right, so, when we talked about Loader, we did talk about the fact that she has a few issues dealing with flying enemies with the wrong kit. Ditto for Railgunner, and Huntress is just Huntress, so let's not worry about her because what are weaknesses? For Artificer, if there's one thing she does have, it's Burst. An ability to take down small flying enemies with her primaries. Be it Flame Bolt or Plasma Bolt, both are good enough to deal with flying enemies, and you can even do it with groups with Plasma Bolt since it detonates. You know, not like Flame Bolt doesn't do that, and not like gasoline exists anyway. Yes, I have an issue with Plasma Bolt, because I just feel it's weaker overall. It's the same thing with the same stack system. Because yeah, that's the main thing about the primaries for Artificer. You cannot use your primaries like auto-attacks. They are spells that you'd use on left-click, and can only have up to four at a time. Which is bull to the shit. Anyway, yeah. No, 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 I'm not done, okay? This is really bad. Attack speed doesn't even reduce charge-up time for stacks, come on! Alright, I'll calm down, because without counting this, the ability is good. Seriously, this has a really nice amount of damage. Flame Bolt with the extra igniting, imagine that with Ignition Tank, and baby, you got a stew going. I really like having fire builds for this character. And I also learned that there's an item that can change everything about that. And the name is Bandolier, since every Bandolier reset gives one stack of auto attacks too, which means late, you're a minigun of massive Great balls of fire. You may hear I don't talk much about Plasma Bolt, and that's because I don't like it. Seriously, when I unlocked it and played with it, it felt super weak when compared to the Flame Bolt, just because of the burn on it. And the fact my build is so intertwined with this ability. 
Of course, if your build is only good because of one ability, uh, don't play that build. Which is why both secondaries are really good. Charged Nanobomb is one of the best skills in the game at dealing the most damage in a low amount of time. When you think about it, in a longer time period, this ability is better at dealing damage than Railgunner's ultimate. I'm sorry, Railgunner. I still prefer your attack, but there's the cooldown that makes it weaker... Uh, no, no, don't cry, come on. Hey, where are you going? No, please, come back here! <sighs> Damn it. Shit, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'll go get her. Come back, come on! It's not like I said you were as weak as Engineer's kit! With that ability, everything switches to a different gear, though. The damage of this is absolutely incredible. 2000% is, once again with feelings this time, two-thirds of a Royal Capacitor and Prion Burst damage. So yeah, it's a lot. To put this into perspective with numbers and stats, because I love stats, you'll be able to one-shot any enemy under 600 at level 1 as long as you have a Runalt Band. Okay, that's cheating. Without it, that's still 240. Knowing most flying enemies have at most half of that at level 1, you can see what I mean. And the best thing is that this is probably the only real skillful ability in the kit of Artificer. When you fire it, it won't actually go straight and will just go down and down slowly. So you'll have to make sure to aim it high, but not too high to not miss it, like, well, an idiot like me. Okay, I spent too long on this ability alone, so let's wrap this up more quickly, because those take a while. Just kidding, we'll take even longer with the second ability, tricked ya! <laughs> Cast Nano Spear is again very interesting. It deals less damage, so this time I'll be able to get Railgunner back in, because you won! Yours is better! Slightly. And the red one doesn't freeze, so yeah. Oh, oh man, F she's back to crying. No, come back! Seriously, this is more comparable to the blue hit of the railgun, so when you compare it to that, there's very little to complain about. This can actually also stun the final boss, which... <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that a mechanic exactly? <laughs> and the worst thing is that this isn't the only thing that has that, because Snap Freeze also does. Imagine the stun lock you can get on Mythrix with those two abilities and a Tentabobble. Actually, no, no, don't imagine, just look! If you're wondering, no fourth phase, because we're that broken. So yeah, Snap Freeze is pretty self-explanatory. You put a wall down, and you stun if something hits that wall. Simple as that. This is why I said Artificer was pretty easy when I talked about Railgunner, because Artificer seems hard. But once you even start looking deeper into what she does, she's absolutely an easy character to play. Not to master, but to play. Good thing, by the way, Snap Freeze is your only shift ability, so everyone gets a stun. Speaking of stuns, let's talk about the most broken effect in the game, eh? We need to talk about freezing. There is nothing in this game that is better. Being able to completely stop any enemy but a boss, except Mythrix, because fuck your difficulty, you've got something pretty strong there. I just think that Artificer actually would be a whole lot less broken without the freezing effect. And that's why I switched from the bomb to the spear after a few games, because I just couldn't believe the strength of the freeze combo. The last ability for Artificer is pretty important as to how you will play the character. 
You can play as an arsonist or a coward. Choose wisely because you have no other choice. The Flam on Furfur is very strong and goes very well with the extra damage of burns again, just like Flame Bolt. Once again with feelings, this can deal so much burn damage. The fact Ignition Tank exists now changed which abilities are stronger on Artificer. One item alone carries an entire build. What a godsend. And the thing is, there's something that isn't exactly stated in the description, but Flamethrower actually benefits from attack speed. It launches faster and gets more and more ticks of damage the more attack speed you've got, which makes this absolutely insane with its proc coefficient increased compared to early access. Oh right, and uh, Ion Surge exists. I absolutely suck with this ability though, so yeah, not a good person to speak up on it for sure. I can't get the damage to proc correctly, I always fail in keeping the height, basically, I suck. But hey, I know I do, so that's cool. But I won't spend a hundred hours on another character. I'll focus on good old reliable and Huntress, my beloved. And the reason I don't is very simple. It's the same reason as Railgunner, because even if I actually do play her a bit, I don't enjoy it much because of mobility issues. And even if I do like now the way in which you can play Artificer, it doesn't mean I will keep playing her because there's just something funner out there. This is why I really enjoy Loader and Huntress. I enjoy Commando 2 with the slide, and only with the slide. We'll talk about that later, don't worry. <laughs> Coming in early 2024. Artificer is strong, I cannot deny that. She also has a good chance to get things going pretty well. By that I mean that you have good reliability and get games all the way to Mythrix without many issues. Your burst is high, your damage will always be good no matter the build, well, as long as you get some damage items. And not attack speed, because that doesn't do much here. And also, as long as you have some crowbars and glasses. And with some of the bands for higher bursts. And some ignition tank, depending on your build. Alright, everyone. That's it for the 2023 guides. I hope you all enjoyed these. They're the most popular thing on the channel. So, here you go. <laughs> Made another one. You're lucky I enjoy making these. The loader guide is on the left of the screen here, by the way, and you can always subscribe and also follow me on Twitch for some impromptu streams. And with that, see you next time, and take care.